You want answers? I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hoorah! Radical Rant. Yesterday I broke the story of Lindsay Reinhardt and Sarah Caldwell. They are two young mothers who are very prominent marijuana activists in the Gem State, my home state of Idaho. Lindsay is the state's most visible medical marijuana patient. She suffers from multiple sclerosis and is the chief petitioner behind the Idaho Medical Choice Act, a very limited form of a medical marijuana initiative. Sarah is the financial officer for Moms for Marijuana International, and Lindsay's husband, Josh Reinhardt, uh, is the head of Idaho Normal. So easily three of the most recognizable, most uh, uh, out front marijuana activists in the state of Idaho. Now, if you missed yesterday's show, while Lindsay and Sarah were out vacationing uh, with Josh as well, um, their four children were staying with a babysitter at Lindsay's house when police, acting on a tip from an elementary school friend of one of their boys, arrived with Child Protective Services. The police, without a warrant, intimidated the babysitter into allowing them into the home, where they allegedly found some of Lindsay's things. And based on that imminent threat to the children, all four boys, aged 11, 10, 6, and 5, were placed into foster care. Now, that story is shocking enough. We, we told the story yesterday, and like I said, these are dear friends of mine, and... All of us, when we get into marijuana activism, recognize the risk we take, the target we put on our backs. And when it's when we're talking about young mothers and young children in the state like Idaho, these women are so brave and so courageous and they deserve so much of our support. And if you can help, if you can help financially, they need to hire lawyers. Obviously, we do have a short link for you. Rad R dot US slash Idaho fund. And make sure you capitalize the I and the F, Idaho Fund, two capital letters there. Rad-R.US slash Idaho Fund. And now the fund is over, last I saw, $2,500. It began just yesterday. This just is remarkable how much the cannabis community has stepped up. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, Mike Riggs from Reason.com is now on the story. And I'm collaborating with him uh, as far as uh, getting more information out on this. Uh, we were also picked up in Ladybud, Toke Signals, Weed Blog. I've posted at Huffington Post. It hasn't made it there yet, but should be up pretty soon. And we're going to bring all the pressure we can to bear on the state of Idaho, on their child protective services, and make people realize what's going on here, how family services, which are meant to protect children from abusers, people who are sexually or physically abusing children, is now being used as a tool to politically attack these people who are trying to pass a medical marijuana initiative. Now, while this was going on in Ada County, Idaho, which is where Boise is, the you know largest city, just to the west in Canyon County, Idaho, where I was born, Canyon County, Idaho, which is the conservative county in Idaho. That's kind of like the sauna in hell, right? The conservative county in Idaho. Another mother attracted the attention of police on the same day, on the same Tuesday, when CPS was taking the kids away from these medical marijuana activists. This woman left her three-year-old and 10-month-old in the car as she briefly went back into the house to grab something. While the kids were alone in the car, the three-year-old found a loaded pistol and fired it, grazing the 10-month-old in the cheek. No charges have been filed. And presumably, this young mother still has her 10-month-old and three-year-old. They weren't taken away by the state. So, let's just see if we can wrap our minds around the mentality in Idaho. If you're a sick person who advocates for legal marijuana to alleviate your suffering from multiple sclerosis and cops find something untoward in your home, why, you're endangering your children. We got to take those kids away immediately and you, you just might face felony time in prison. But if you're a healthy person who lets your unattended children have unfettered access to a loaded handgun and it actually does harm one of your children... Why, it's just an accidental shooting, and you get to keep your kids, and no charges are filed. 
Now, sadly, this is not confined to just Idaho. In California, Daisy Bram, a legal medical marijuana patient in California, has lost her children repeatedly for alleged abuse, which consists of growing non-toxic houseplants and breastfeeding while using marijuana. And this is what it sounds like when police literally ripped the children, ripped the baby suckling at her breast away from her. Okay. Daisy, what you're under arrest for is cultivation of marijuana and, po and possession of marijuana for sale. She don't cultivate. Okay. And then Jamie, what, what you're under? Wait, wait, she got mercy and a cut on her hand. Okay. And then Jamie. Okay. Jamie, then what you're under arrest for is cultivation of marijuana, possession of marijuana. Last week, I collected five stories of parents who lost their children over marijuana gardens, and another five stories where children aged four and under were shot or shot somebody when they were allowed unfettered access to a loaded handgun. Nobody, nobody in the five child gun stories was ever charged with child endangerment, and none of those children with guns were ever taken away by Child Protective Services. The five that were growing marijuana gardens, kids taken away, child endangerment charges. How tragically absurd. If your child has access to a lethal machine that kills someone, it's just an accident. If your child has access to a non-lethal plant that heals someone, that's child endangerment. Insane. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. All the time we got here for Hour 1. Join us at Hour 2 Toker Talk Radio. We'll take your calls at 971-533-7111, and we'll talk more about this topic. For Brian the Red, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, take care of each other, Tokers.